for a lot of people who are both deaf and blind, they are getting older and they're often living alone and they really need um, to be able to keep in contact with their families and they need to be able to keep in contact with their service providers and they need to be able to communicate with whoever's helping them with their shopping or paying their bills. I think it's social isolation has massive effects on all areas of somebody's life, uh, from mental health to well-being to your potential to build your own capacities to work, to volunteer, to be involved in your community. All these sorts of things, if you can't access the people and the things that are around you, are impossible, you know, almost pipe dreamy in terms of how lofty those goals are. When we can get somebody up and running on a piece of technology to a level where they can access face-to-face -face communication, email communication, the internet, social media, all these sorts of things, then all of a sudden those goals that seem quite daunting when you're stuck, disconnected from everything, start to kind of come more into focus and seem like much more of an achievable reality. So not only are people then able to engage in activities that are fulfilling, but the overall impact on their mental health, their self-concept, their well-being is really, really profound. For people with deaf blindness, the, the, the most profound manifestation of their disability is that lack of connection. So they're cut off visually from the world around them, they're cut off orally from the world around them, and because the majority of the community here are first language Auslan users, they're also cut off from individual interactions because people don't speak their language. Um, that has meant that for a lot of the lifetime of the people that we see, they've relied on third parties to access other people to access services, to access information. Technology, particularly the smartphone technology that we've seen a massive uptake in over the last five years, is the first time that it's connected deafblind people directly to each other, to the community around them and to the greater world um, in terms of access to information. So it's absolutely been a game changer in this community. The concept of Island Share starts off with the idea that um, we try and introduce people who are deaf and blind to an iPhone or an iPad, so some sort of mobile device that's mainstream. Because we recognise that a lot of people in their families have got these devices, um, their carers, service providers, and the general community have got these devices. So it immediately is a connection point. So we show them how to use it with their low vision or with their blindness, and they become a bit responsible for it. But from then on, if they want to learn more about Facebook, or if they want to learn about banking, or if they want to learn about any of the apps, they can ask any of their immediate family. So it's, it's about sharing, sharing the love of technology and enabling them to tap into the expertise that is around them. Deafblind people will experience technology in a way that we never will. They conceptualise things like social media and the role it can play in their lives in a, in a way that's quite different to the way hearing inside people do. So it, there's really a wealth of knowledge there that just needs to be leveraged in the right way in order to help other people in the community and that's what we've tried to set up with our peer trainers. So iPhones are fantastic. Um, the smartphones have got all of the um, technology that we require in terms of SMS and email and internet. Uh, so iPhone 4s and above would be fantastic. Um, iPads are really, really good because they've also got inbuilt accessibility. So any donations of old devices would be great. The starting point is just setting up programs that can get the deafblind community, wherever it is, together, talking, communicating, sharing stories on a regular basis. Mm -hmm.